It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Cincinnati Bengals. Next on Madden Football. From the banks of the Ohio River, there's a look at what's now known as Paycor Stadium here in Cincinnati. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But, Charles, a lot of people see these Bengals as legitimate contenders to get to the Super Bowl. And remember, they got there just two years ago. What do they need to do to get back? Well, we know how well positioned they are on offense, partner, because they have one of the best quarterbacks in the game and a lot of firepower to go with it. But how about what they did in the draft this year? A lot of capital expended on the defensive side of the ball, trying to slow down some of the other top contenders. And meanwhile, for the Vikings, their go-to man, the NFL's Offensive Player of the Year last season. And Charles, of course, that's Justin Jefferson. And can you dance like Justin Jefferson? Because I certainly cannot. But defenses, they see him dance all the way through them and find his way into the end zone. I don't care how you plan, he is difficult to stop. We are set to go. Evan McPherson to do the honors, and we are underway from Cincinnati. This taken in right around the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They'll be led out by a seventh-year pro and a literal rocket scientist. Here's Joshua Dobbs. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. Oh, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. First carry now for Alexander Madison. And this will be a Vikings first down as he gets it up past the 35. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Dobbs looking to throw on first down. That's caught by the big tight end, TJ Hawkinson. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And it'll be second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Two yards still to go, third down now. To throw his downs. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Vikings first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, 
getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. And despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. I think they tried to fool them on that one. You know, be able to throw the ball to the fullback position. No one was fooled on that play. No, lost yardage. You think they should yank that one from the playbook, at least uh, for the time being? <laughs> I, think, I think what you do is you take it out and you evaluate it next week in practice. Here's Dobbs to throw. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. So the completion there, Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allowed a completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him, because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely, as one of the better coaches in the league always tells me. On offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. Touchdown! T.J. Hawkinson, 28 yards. And the Vikings will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. Quite the drive there to get things started. They took up the bulk of the first quarter, and they end up in the end zone. And I love your last point. Ended up in the end zone. Because a lot of teams like those long drives, especially to keep their offense off the field, right? Keep the ball away from them. But they finished it with a touchdown. That's the exclamation point. Now flip it over defensively. They've got to slow that down somehow, right? Maybe they need to be a little more aggressive. Maybe a few more pressures towards the quarterback. Joseph connects on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And they're brought out by the former Washington Husky. Undrafted back in 2019, Jake Browning. Brandon, I know he isn't at the status of some of the elite names in this league, but I do know he's an absolute fighter because he's heard all the criticism. He's read the articles that say he isn't good enough to be the starter, and he absolutely does not care. All he wants to do is prove every doubter wrong and show that he belongs in this spot. The throw down the field caught by his running back. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Cincinnati. It's the Bengals with the football here. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start. Here's another first and 10. Now Browning. And he will find his man Chase complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. It's another first down as they bite off 23 more on that one. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. To throw Browning. This goes out wide for Mixon. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way, and really we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Here's Browning. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. 
He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Back to throw again. Connecting on the out route here with Higgins. And he is going to lose yardage here. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. No surprise they decided to throw on third down. A little bit of a surprise that they completed the pass and lost yardage on the play. So on fourth down, on is Evan McPherson and the Bengal field goal unit. This is a 49-yard attempt. Right hash. McPherson's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So both teams come away with points on their opening drives. Now they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. Kene Nwagu now out of his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Out is their quarterback with this offense to take over once more. He hasn't had a ball touch the ground yet. Eight of eight throwing it, perfect so far, including the touchdown on the last drive, you remember, as they begin first and ten here. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 49 yards rushing for him now. And he's only carried the ball four times. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now. And that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. Throwing here, Dobbs to Jefferson on the slam. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 35. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. On first and 10, Dobbs. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Second and 10. Dobbs. His throw incomplete. Well, it looked like it marched to the end zone. He's had a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Dobbs is throwing. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 14. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, 
We see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. From the shotgun, here's Dobbs. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Five yards, now it's third and five. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Out of the gun, Dobbs. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. touchdown grab and the Vikings will extend their lead in the final minute of the half now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass yeah nor was it necessary his receiver won that route early presented himself no reason to wait go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown Joseph on for the extra point And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And Jordan Addison capped it off with a touchdown catch. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Bengals going to take over late in this first half. Well, not much time remains here in this first half. We'll see if they can get something out of this drive, at least a field goal. They could certainly use it down by two scores. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Here's second and ten. Back to throw. Browning. And incomplete on the deep ball. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know that there's probably another throw coming on third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. This time they stay on the ground, and he'll be stopped here well short of the first down at the 24-yard line. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. So 
So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. Brandon Powell deep for Minnesota. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. And just 18 seconds remain till halftime as they come up on first and 10. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. It's a gain of a couple on what should be the final carry of half number one. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Ready for the second half. 14 to 3 our scores. We are back underway on EA Sports. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Jet sweep. Boyd with it. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 23 yards the pick up there. I think the reason this play is so successful is not just the blocking at the point of attack, but how about the speed at which he takes the handoff? He's in motion already, so he's not coming from a flat start like a running back often is. He's at a full run by the time he gets the football. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 43. Inside handoff to Mixon. And that one opened up for him well as he'll take this down to the 26-yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And that's going to be caught. T. Higgins. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. 23 yards, the final tally. Well, this is a defense that's definitely on their heels now because they gave up the running play for good yardage one play ago. Now the pass here sets this offense up first and goal. They're going to have to dig in strong now because they've been in retreat so far on this drive. This offense on the march. Dumps it off to Mixon. Touchdown, Bengals! Joe Mixon from three yards out. And the Bengals have cut it back within a score. Didn't have anything downfield. Swung it out to the flat. He did the rest. Such a staple of so many offenses we see now. You know, in our discussions with offense coordinators, how many times did they tell us, hey, this offense is designed for either a touchdown or a check down. We saw the check down on that play, and boy, was it successful. We saw a touchdown, too. Zach Taylor's made the decision. They'll go for two here. 
They'll look to throw. And he's got it. So the try for two successful. And with it, they're back within a field goal. I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. To the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise that could overrun your team. You've got to be careful right here. 66 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. They're going to be stopped up on this first down run. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no game. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Now Dobbs. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football, and the Bengals does the big boy have the juice. And this is taken into the end zone. Fumble recovery and a Cincinnati touchdown. So a big turn of events there. This defense makes the play. They return for the score, and now they have the lead. So much for ball security for the offense. Playing with the lead in the second half. They give the ball up, and all of a sudden they're behind. Big time fumble. Evan McPherson for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. So not only the cough-up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Taken at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. They had that lead, looked pretty comfortable in the first half, maybe got a little bit overconfident because that's gone now. Almost takes us back to being kids, doesn't it? Because I know at some point your dad did the exact same thing mine did. Okay. It's okay to be confident, son, but overconfident, that's not a good thing. And that's maybe what we saw here. They thought they had this thing in hand. 
had full control, and guess what? They've got to find a way to get back to where they were before. You think Papa Davis and Papa Gordon would get along? I think they'd get along just fine, <laughs> and you know something? They'd still be giving us advice. Absolutely. Here's Madison getting it again on second. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Now third down and seven. On play action, it's Dobbs. Complete. Jefferson the target. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. But you can absolutely feel the thought process there. They just gave up the touchdown. So in the huddle, they're telling each other, you don't want to give it back now on a three and out. Nice job of making sure that they wouldn't, and they pick up the first down. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Dobbs to throw. This one caught. It's the tight end, Hawkinson. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A good pick up there, 26 yards. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. Here's Madison running on first down, and he'll be taken down after a minimal pickup, and that will take us to the end of quarter number three. Three quarters have come and gone. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. From the 42-yard line, here's second down and seven. Going to run with Madison again. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Here's Dobbs to throw. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. To throw his Dobbs. This is Alexander Madison out of the backfield with it. Nifty move. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A real letdown defensively. That was third and a bundle but they allow the conversion. And when you're throwing the ball downfield really well like they have been on this drive, it's really a nice time to work one of the screen plays in. One of my favorite play callers in the game has always told me he starts every game with 10 to 12 screens because if he starts feeling the pressure from the defense, he uses their aggressiveness against them. Running from the shotgun with Madison. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Under four to go now as the clock runs, and they come up on second down. In motion right is Osborne. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and off the play action, he'll look to throw it. Justin Jefferson. Touchdown, Vikings. Justin Jefferson, 26 yards. And the Vikings answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. The plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. 
A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was all capped off by Justin Jefferson's touchdown reception. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Defensively, Harrison Phillips there to stop him. But from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Now Browning. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him to throw Browning. The throw right side here gonna be incomplete. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Here's Powell on the return. It'll be a 39-yard punt, four on the return, and it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Off the play fake, here's Dobbs. A uh, quick throw there is incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Now a second and ten. Back to throw Dobbs. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Ten yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time, he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. They'll fake it on the jet sweep and instead a handoff up the middle. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Here's third and three. Off the play fake. Dobbs. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. 
Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. So now the Bengals down 21-18. Just over a minute, 40 to play. Now they need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. They'll look to throw. Complete to Boyd. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. I don't know that those medium five-ish yard gains are going to do it right now. Probably should have dropped it, right? Yeah, that way you save more time on the clock. But I know receivers, they think they can catch it and break a tackle and turn it into a big gain. Now second and four. He's back to throw. Connected with Mixon. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. And they picked up a little bit of yardage there. And now... In this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Final minute, one timeout remaining. First and ten. He'll look to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Under 50 seconds to play. Here's second and 10. Back to throw. The pass to Boyd, and he brings it in on the crossing route. So they'll, of course, decline the pass interference there and wisely take the yardage. And I think defensively he's saying, I was getting away with that in the first half. Why are you making that call? And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Finally hauled down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. Now how about that? Defensive coordinator perfectly in sync, dials up a blitz. And the man in the middle, he's the one who gets home. Big Mike. Big Mike. Back to throw. And this one is incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Maybe looking for a flag, but they're not going to get one there. They took a shot, hoping to find a way to sneak into field goal range, but it's incomplete. And now with time almost gone, the task gets much more difficult. Got to avoid the flags defensively. Here's fourth and long. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger 
and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Cincinnati.